Hi guys, this is part four of a series by Muslim apologists where these guys try and project something they call scientific findings into an old book, the Quran. And welcome to a new episode um, of uh, the scientific miracles narrative and we're trying to unpack it and really be as critical uh, as possible. I'm what does that mean? Nothing. <laughs> it means nothing. Once again, I'm sorry to have to say this, it's just another display of two Muslim apologists lying and deceiving others. Nothing more. Now, after an intro and two minutes of waffling, going on about something non-existent, something impossible, something they term scientific miracles, they then go on for about half an hour talking about this. Uh, the scientific miracles narrative. Now, we need to be clear about this. The video does not contain any narrative, which would be a story of connected events. Instead, we get singular instances of miracles, miracles claims, scientific miracles claims. And it's number four in their series and is split into two parts where the first part is reinforcing the previous, and I'm sorry to have to say this, previous lies. And then in the second part, bringing up further miracle claims, which have also been shown to be dishonest and false in the last couple of years. Now, why they do this is beyond me, right? Anyone with two intact brain cells can look the claims up and find that they're fakes. It's very easy. We're in the 21st century. They've all been addressed and debunked. So in all... This is just nonsense, you know, trying to deceive unsuspecting viewers to believe that there is some sort of scientifically accurate description of something in this book, the Quran, which is not the case, not at all. And even if there were, so what? I don't know why they are so bent on having something scientifically accurate in this old book. So let me take this step by step and show what is fake and what is a lie by comparing the claims to reality and exposing this again. Because I've done this with Zindani, then with Nike, then Sources, then LDM, and now these clowns. And I'm not going to comment the unprofessional setup, the horrific audio, you know, this unnecessary passing this tiny microphone back and forth. Uh, I don't care about that. Now, the guy with the black beard and a white dress starts off by stating that many, many hadiths is more than one. And uh, many, many of them, more than one, actually said that the hadith is weak. Wow, that's interesting. And then we get the remarkable ability to make, update, stretch, change, modify anything what you want into whatever you want, where all the hadiths in Sahih collections, which are Sahih, which are authentic, well, until they say something you don't like anymore, when they suddenly become weak and are to be doubted. But they're all authentic, straight from Muhammad, and thus almost scripture, until they're not. The same as the Quran is very clear and must be followed until the sentence is actually more allegorical, or maybe it was revealed or sent down at a specific time, or at a specific place, or according to an event, and can thus be ignored today, or requires a new, fresh interpretation to match what we know today. But nothing in the Quran can be changed, and no layman, or just a plain Muslim, is allowed to interpret it. Only the scholars, whatever that may mean. Now, we get this highly interesting statement, which in my eyes at least, torpedoes all Sunni Islam and renders Islam useless. The hadith is not something we accept, uh, generally speaking. And the guy in the dress reinforces that and says the Quran is source number one and is to be given preference. So then, why exactly is alcohol forbidden? Music, burqa, and so on and on. These are all topics which are not really described in the Quran and only come from the secondary sources. Why couldn't this all-knowing, all-powerful God put everything that was required into a single package? Or better still, transmit everything individually. You know, G, G to P, God to person. Now that, that would be much more efficient and accurate instead of going through the Quran and then people coming up with the Sunnah and then explaining it and then scholars over the years interpreting this and then giving this to people who again interpret this until we don't know anymore again, what is what. Uh, people use it in kind of uh, discourse against Muslims. Ah, no, this is another, and I call this a fat lie, because I argue against false claims. 
I expose false claims and criticize bad ideas and not all Muslims. And next, we get this, like a, a good example of this dishonesty at work here. Because hijab talks about a word in the Quran, a fluid, and then brings in semen or sperm, making it seem as though they're synonyms, which they're not. Either can exist without the other. The story with the backbone and the ribs is somewhat different. So when it suits them, they can say the Quran is talking about an individual cell, the spermatozoon or whatever, and then when it doesn't, they say it refers to semen. So depending on what they want. So the semen is the transport liquid only. And, you know, they can go and they simply ignore the female cell, the ovum. How can they do that? And no, semen is not produced anywhere near the ribs either. So the Quran is totally off course and wrong, simply following beliefs held in antiquity in Greece two and a half thousand years ago. And neither sperm nor semen are produced in the kidneys from between the backbone and the ribs. Well, you can stretch this or vary this. It doesn't make it correct. Now, this is a theory which was erroneously propagated by Hippocrates, Aristotle, the Ayurveda, Galen, Asius, and Aaron of Alexandria, and so on and on. And Muslim scholars can't really agree on what this water, this ma'in, actually means and are now explaining this away with new translation efforts. But this sulbi valtari means spine and rib bones, nothing else, and it refers to water. Is there anything verifiably correct here? No. The guy on the right now tries to do his magic thing, retranslating and reinterpreting, and fails. The lower part of the back. And I think many of the Mufassirun actually state that uh, there is a near consensus that it refers to the lower part of the back of the man. He claims there is consensus. Is there really consensus that this should be the lower part of the back? Let's see what Ibn Kathir has to say. Well, he says something different, as does Ibn Abbas. So where is this consensus that it is the lower part of the back? Al-Asra? Nope. The Jalalains? No. So let's face it, we have a creation myth which does not resemble reality and thus is false. And this is exacerbated by a claim that semen or sperm or water or liquid of sorts is produced as is claimed by ancient medicine somewhere in the body, the upper body, which is also false. So the Quran neither specifies nor differentiates between semen or a single sperm cell and uses only the word ma or water or liquid to describe this. A despised liquid, I might add. The location is falsely determined as anywhere between the vocal cords and the liver. So this is not a miracle, but vague and ambiguous wording. And that was common knowledge then. And it's wrong as we know today. Woman, and there's a number, that I've, I think I, I came across roughly five or six different opinions as yeah. to what it means. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's quite open to interpretation. Now this is only 20 seconds later, and he's contradicting himself completely. So what happened to this consensus that he was talking about? This is how bad this is, okay? So why not be honest and admit we don't know and then get on with life instead of trying to squeeze scientific accuracy and precision in where none exists? Uh, even for us, we wouldn't say that according to the 21st century discourse, scientific discourse, is not a real problem because we know that the seminal gland and the, uh, and all the, a lot of the basically semen-producing uh, glands are, are actually in between in, conjunct in, in conjunction with the area mentioned in the Quran. Semen? Yeah, that's how deceptive this guy is suddenly. It's semen. We're talking about the claim here that the Quran mentions something resembling embryology. And semen plays no decisive role in embryology. It's just a transport mechanism. Nothing in semen only can fertilize the female cell, the ovum. You need minimum one sperm cell, one spermatozoon, the male cell for that. So he's simply lying. He, or, well, okay, let me give him the benefit of that. He has no clue what he's talking about. I think what they're getting confused is Nutfa, which is very specific semen, uh, sperm, and uh, semen, which, which could be, as we said, met and it could be something else completely. Rubbish. There is no semen and specific semen, um, sperm, uh, semen, uh, uh, sperm. Man, which is it? Hijab constantly claims he's using what he calls scientific discourse or scientific narrative. 
which is actually bullshit. And then he still lies and makes it look as though some things very different can be used interchangeably. What an uneducated, willfully ignorant fool and highly deceptive because he delivers these lies with total confidence, leading gullible viewers to believe he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> but he doesn't. Because, come on, at the end of the day, you can simply put a textbook on embryology next to the Quran and compare them side by side. And, ex and then you just examine the contents of both. And that is something I will always recommend people do in these situations. Just compare them line by line. Now, it says humans are created from clay. That's what it says in the Quran. Does the textbook on embryology, which simply describes reality, and this is what happens in nature, does it mention clay? No. So in the real world, there is no clay involved. So already right from the beginning, the Quran is wrong. Because the textbook describes what actually happens, and the Quran only makes claims without data, facts, or evidence. Now, the, the textbook mentions gametes, a female cell and a male cell, and they complement each other. Does the Quran mention any of these cells? No. Does it mention that these are haploids? No. The Quran mentions a drop of semen. Does the textbook? No. Can semen fertilize a female egg? No. The textbook now describes in detail the process of fertilization, where these two cells merge. Does the Quran mention the female egg and the male sperm cells merging? No. The Quran mentions a blood clot. The textbook does not. Or it mentions a leech being involved somewhere in the process. Does the textbook mention a leech somewhere? No. Nor does it mention water, dust, or mud, which are mentioned in the Quran. So what on earth are we talking about? Nothing matches. None of it. So how can anyone label this embryology when this is only about myths, gods, and magic? The Quran describes a creation myth, not reality. And what really happens in the real world? There is no mention of this. Is it honest to make this fairy tale look as though it is true? When will all Muslims learn to accept a fact? There is no embryology mentioned in the Quran. All we get is the level of knowledge of people at the time the Quran was written. Today we know better and we know the Quran is wrong on almost everything. That is reality and you can't continue denying this. And now after six minutes they change the topic and move on to the second part, the next mistakes in the Quran, like mountains. Now, what we need to appreciate here is that everything about mountains in the Quran is wrong. Everything. Just to recap, mountains grow upwards and are not placed on top of the ground, as is described in the Quran. There are different types of mountains, at least five very, very different ones. Mountains are still formed now, today, right now, and still grow, or they they reduce, or whatever. They, they're taken down there, they're growing up. There's all sorts of activity happening in mountains. They're not only created in the past and then fixed, and there are no mountains of and for hail. And earthquakes, what Zakenai calls shaking of the ground, often, this, these often occur near mountains and are not eliminated by them at all, quite the opposite. There is no mention of roots of mountains in the entire Quran. And mountains, I'm sorry to have to tell you, have no function, least of all acting as or like pigs. Now, to ancient Arabs, mountains were like stones they placed on carpets to stop them from blowing away, or pegs. Rationalizer made a brilliant video demonstrating this. And the sim this, this, funny enough, this, this description is similar to the Hindu Vedas, something I've also shown. Go to my video on mountains. So what do we find when comparing the claims made in the Quran and the description of reality side by side? Nothing in the Quran is correct when mentioning mountains. It simply does not compare with reality. And Muslims today must accept this. Now, when talking about the description of mountains in the Quran, Hijab intervened saying, Well, we know that the earth rotates around its axis. Well, 
obviously. <laughs> and that's interesting. Does the Quran state this? No. So where does he get this information that he can say, we know Earth rotates around its axis? Now, what we see here is that everyone today gets the facts from science. It's just that some people then run this realistic and accurate information through their worldview filter and select only those parts they agree with. Then they find ways, which are usually dishonest, of defending this very action and the resulting distorted view of reality. And that is exactly what we see here. And now the guy in the dress comes with his dishonest nonsense again. It depends and da da da. Well, again, this un it depends on how, how the current modern scientific discourse understands the role of tectonic plates and these kinds yeah. of I'm not a scientist, actually. And yeah, he trails he, off, lost. And he admits he is not a scientist. Is there, is there, any, is there any contradiction? Because Absolutely not. Yeah. How the hell would he know whether or not there's a contradiction between Quran and geology? If he just admitted a few seconds ago, he has no clue. He just admitted seconds ago he is not a scientist. So how the hell would he know? Why is he even here talking about scientific claims when he has zero education in anything scientific? He's an expert, an expert in fairy tales, nothing else. And that's why I get so angry and frustrated with these charlatans. They state with, with total confidence and utter ignorance things they don't understand and they're lying through their teeth. Only to impress gullible Muslims who have been brought up to obey and not to think, not critical. And this critical thinking you need and if it is lost you cannot come to a clear decision of what re reality is and what the Quran says. They will believe these two tricksters. They will cheer them on, not realizing these two are liars because of the missing critical thinking faculty. It's, it's simple. And they don't see that they are plain liars, dishonest to the core and immoral as they are completely unsympathetic to their viewers and what they're doing to them as well as the consequences of this. But a normal Muslim cannot see this. Because he's not, he's not equipped, he doesn't have the tool to recognize this. So I have shown this now several times. And if people still want to believe what these two are saying, I can't help them any further. What follows now from these two tricksters is a side issue and only interesting when it comes to pre-Islamic texts, which don't really exist. And those which are claimed to be are slowly dragged out of their claimed era into the more probable and realistic Islamic era. Okay, back to science and the Quran. The ocean, from an oceanog uh, oceanography perspective, like you can't see the hand. That means that at a certain depth. At a certain depth. Yeah. What do you think of this? Yeah, this was also debunked, killed, reviewed it, annihilated. It's a false claim, a mistake in the Quran. And this is not recent knowledge at all. People in antiquity, I mean, they knew that sunlight cannot penetrate water more than a few hundred meters. Like as red light is absorbed quicker, a red fish will appear black just a couple of meters below the surface, depending on local conditions, of course. Now, what is a recent discovery, however, is that the oceans are far from dark with underwater volcanoes, the so-called smokers. They're bringing in light, as do something like 80% of marine life forms with varying types of bioluminescence. It's only sunlight that is missing. So, sorry, once again, the Quran is wrong. And... As they did in their previous videos, they bring in clips of Dr. Zaki Naik, an Indian doctor who built an empire on his lies supporting Islam. Here's just as an example, a short clip of how this fool claims we've all died out in this video, 25 mistakes in five minutes. Then next came the Homo sapiens, who died about 500,000 years ago. Now, should we laugh or cry? I think we can safely exclude him from any further discussion. And after 16 out of the 27 minutes, our two heroes drop the next bomb. Everything is created in pairs. pairs. And uh, how the kind of the, the plants have got pairs. So let's take a look at uh, a video from uh, Zach and Ike talking about how the plants have are in different pairs. No, we will not watch Zakir Naik because we know that he will only add more confusion and lies. Now, this creation in pairs was obvious 1,000 or 3,000 years ago, but it's no longer true today, where we get all sorts of nuances from changing gender life forms to both genders to none to... I mean, anything goes. The Quranic claim is a mistake. It is totally wrong. 
and as usual our white dress guy simply says he doesn't know and anything is possible he's not a great help here I think it's a point to understand firstly the linguistic meaning of Zawj. Yeah, okay. You know, Al Fayru Zabadi, a famous uh, linguist, Arabic linguist, he, he mentions in Al uh, Qamus al Muhid that the word Zawj in Arabic, roughly translated as pair, yeah? okay. it has a number of meanings. Mm-hmm. It could mean a, a, a male, uh, a female, hus- a wife, mm-hmm. or a husband, or it could mean something that is uh, not uh, one meaning, more than one thing. It could mean a pair. It could mean a type of color. It could mean something that was uh, typically placed on top of camels in order for, 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 for other people to sit on. So it has a number and of And this continues for a while. All he manages when asked something is, depends on the interpretation. It's possibly this, possibly that, depending on what people say, but it can change every... I, come on, if he can change everything in the Sunnah or the Quran to have it mean what I want, what exactly is the value of these texts? And hang on just a minute. I Come on. Isn't this pretty useless? If I would have to bet my eternal existence on something nobody really understands and nobody really has a definite answer for, what can be changed by human beings? What happened to the certainty? I always hear from hijab and other Muslim apologists. Now, it seems when it gets down to specifics, this certainty and confidence rapidly evaporates. And Allah knows best. How exactly does that help a human Muslim to plan their path to salvation and eternal bliss? Well, again, I think uh, it's relative, isn't it? It, yeah. it could be used as a side note. It very well could be interpreted as a metaphorical as possible. Then it's difficult to limit the meaning. Okay. It's difficult to limit the meaning. Um, so definitely it's, it's open to interpretation. Kul in the Arabic language is roughly translated as everything, right? Yeah. Kul, Lushay, everything, right? But it doesn't actually mean this in the Arabic language. Big time, major league bullshit. All kinds of things or a certain number of things, mm. but not necessarily everything. Mm. Okay? It could mean have a number of meanings. Mm. That it could mean that it has three, roughly three different meanings. So it could mean that it... Mm. But uh, Allah, 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 Allah knows best. Mm. Poof. No wonder Muslims have doubts and need to be threatened using hellfire on the emotional level and getting executed on the physical level to keep them in line with the ideology, much like the walls in communism which kept people from leaving. Okay, in the video now it's Noah and the animals on the boat where, I mean, come on, in reality just looking at aquatic life forms and most plants would have definitely perished in the changing water conditions. So whichever way you examine this, it's, it, it fails, it's fairy tales. It's just childish fairy tales. It has nothing to do with reality. So it says, we have sent down iron. Oh, really? Well, it's no big deal. Debunked. They actually, and this is quite funny, they realize how stupid the text of the Quran is when it comes to cattle being sent down. So they need to modify it. Was, was that, were, were, yeah, were the cows falling from the sky or what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not? And no, the Allah sending down stuff is being claimed over 70 times, not just three. Okay, next. Yeah. Because yeah. it is the case that we have, you know, queen bees. The queen bee is um, obviously a female. Are all bees females? No. A really childish claim. Let's move on to the next one. Oh, that's it. Oh, well, well, okay. Nothing impressive here. And what I find telling is that the Quran does not mention human evolution. So Muslims must reject it, no matter how accurate or how correct it actually is. In Arabic Quran, very clear to be understood for the people who is addressing. Well, then the Quran is for sure not addressing me or the other 99.999% of the population who have not studied Quranic or ancient Arabic. Or send me an email, but probably leaving in the comments is better. Well, yeah, I left a comment. It disappeared. Of course, <laughs> nothing honest here. Okay, in all this video, once again, a complete fail made by ignorant worshippers of fairy tales trying to fool others regarding an old book they call Quran. Why can't these apologists face and accept the facts and stop lying to themselves and others? But anyway, thanks for holding out in this video here, taking interest in it. And if you like it, thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. Tell me why. See you next time. Bye.